In the last lesson, we learned about how to do scatter plots, and we're going to extend that information for this lesson, and we're going to make these things called lines of fit. And lines of fit are lines, obviously, that go through the scatter plot and help you predict where future dots might be. So we're going to start off doing what we did last time, and letter A wants you to make a scatter plot of the data and draw a line of fit. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video, grab a piece of graph paper, no line paper or blank paper, I want a graph paper scatter plot, and please plot the values, make a scatter plot. Once you have the scatter plot, press play, and I'll help you continue the rest. What I'm going to do is do my best to make a line that goes through the center of the points. You want your line to go through as many points as possible, but it won't go through all the lines. So what you are not doing is just making a big zigzag with all the points. What you're doing is you're making a straight line that has as many points below the line as it does above the line. So you do a little thinking. You don't just randomly grab your pen, pencil and make a line. So what I looked and I saw was I can make the line go through these points. <clears throat> and then I have three points below the line and three points above the line. So obviously mine is a little wiggly. I would want to use a ruler if I had one handy and you should use something as well. But that's my line of fit. In letter B, we have to come up with the equation of this line. So since it should go through some of the points, you pick any two points and you come up with the slope and the y-intercept. So I'll pick the two points in the center, which are these two points, and the slope is negative 2 over 1. So the m is negative 2. And the B is right here at 0, 20. So the formula is Y equals negative 2X plus 20. Letter C asks us to interpret what both the slope and the intercept mean. So first I'll do the slope. Negative 2 over 1 means, remember interpret means to explain, so negative 2 over 1 means the depth of the river goes down 2 feet every month. We also have to make sure we do all parts of the question. They also want us to interpret the y-intercept. 0, 20 means the original or starting depth is 20 feet. Finally, the last question wants us to figure out what it would be at month nine. So luckily we've come up with a formula right here and we can predict where this is going to be in month nine. So let's use our formula y equals negative 20 but instead of x I'll put nine oh not negative 20 negative 2. Negative 2 times 9 plus 20. So that's negative 18 plus 20, and so it will be at 2 feet. I'd like you to do the on your own, and I'll give you the answers when you're ready. So pause, try the on your own. So hopefully you are very similar to mine, and I just want to point out that you might not have the exact same slope that I do, because we're just estimating where the line would be. But your slope should be pretty close to 250, like 270 or 230 or something. That's okay. And obviously then your answer to D and C would be different. 
But if your slope is way off, like if you said it was like 400, then you definitely need to reevaluate how you figured out your slope or what your line is. So you can either take it upon yourself to decide if your slope is very similar to mine, then it's okay. If you're not sure, you can definitely ask me in class and I'll let you know um, whether I think your slope is good enough or not. And when you're ready, let's go to the next page where we learn about this cool feature on a graphing calculator. When you come to class next time, I'm going to show you this thing on the graphing calculator called the linear regression. And I'm not going to lie, it's actually kind of super cool. And what it does is it finds this thing called the line of best fit. And what it will do when it finds the line of best fit is it tells you the best possible line that you could possibly have for the scatter plot. And the calculator gives you this letter R, and it's called the correlation coefficient. So a correlation means how, how like closely things are related. So for example, off topic um, example is if I say there's a strong correlation between how much you study and what you get on a test. So that's telling me that there is a relationship between the number of hours that you study and what you get on the test as your grade. So that's what a correlation is. Um, and the, the correlation coefficient could be either positive or negative, and it tells you how closely it models the data. So for example, R, which could be from negative 1 to positive 1, tells you that if it's close to 1 or negative 1, if it's close to these extremes, then it's going to be a strong correlation. Meaning that the line that we get is almost perfectly going to tell you where the dots lie. If you have a correlation coefficient that's kind of close to zero, then it's a very weak correlation. Now, a strong positive correlation will be where the dots are going in a positive direction, and they're all pretty much on a straight line. They're all making a very linear pattern. A strong negative correlation would be the same thing, only the dots are going down instead of going up. No correlation would be like where the dots are all over the place and you can't predict where any of the other dots would be with a good line. So when you come to class, we'll do example two using the graphing calculator. And hopefully you think it's as super cool as I do. And if you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.